Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Dr. Mensa Odebill turns 50, and we're thinking about all the smart things he's learned in his life. From hugs with family to big wins, every moment teaches us something important. Life's like a big song. We're all different, but we're all singing together, even when things get tough. Life's a mix of good times and tough ones, but together, they make a beautiful picture. Let's remember the things Dr. Mensa Odebill's learned. They can light up our way to a better future. I started talking about 50 things I've learned along the way, and I didn't complete, I couldn't complete the 50 lessons I've learned so far in life. These are not the only lessons I learned, but 50 that I think I can share with you. And so I'm going to continue, and because there are quite a lot of them, I don't want to take too much time. I just want to go straight in and continue from number 23, the 23rd lesson I have learned in the last 50 years is that life's great opportunities come unannounced. Life's great opportunities come unannounced. Opportunity most of the time does not knock opportunity just shows up and when it shows up you better be ready if you're not ready it will go to the next neighbor it will go to somebody else if you're not ready it will not wait for you and most opportunities don't come in in a way that we can easily recognize that sometimes opportunity comes to you wrapped up in problems wrapped up in a crisis wrapped up in chaos it comes from the wrong person somebody you thought should not be the one who should give you the opportunity becomes the opportunity sometimes something that is meant for evil turns to your good a trap that is set for you becomes a stepping stone so you can never tell what is going to happen to that which stands before you today it may look like a problem tomorrow it will be the solution that opens greater doors for you opportunity life's great opportunities do not come announced. They don't announce themselves. Opportunity does not show up to say, Hey, look at me, I'm opportunity. No, it comes silently and sometimes you just need discernment to know it. And how do you know? You only know it when you are ready for it. You only know it when you trust God. You have to trust God one day at a time, one moment at a time. And trust God to turn even the things that are meant for evil to your good. When you see people set traps for you, don't be bothered about the traps. Just ask God to convert it to a stepping stone and he will turn it to a stepping stone. Life's great opportunities come unannounced. Number 24, 24th lesson. Change is constant. The world does not pause because I paused. Life will go on whether you go on or not. Life will move on with or without you. Things are going to change. Nothing is permanent on this side of eternity. Nothing is permanent. Something that you thought would be there always will change right before your eyes. Your children will grow right before your eyes. They won't be babies any longer. Somebody who today is nobody will become somebody. The person who takes instructions from you today may be giving you instructions tomorrow. Change is constant. Things change. Life changes. And when things change, whether you move or not, it will move. And life will not stop for you, pause for you, because you need more time. And just because you're going through a problem does not mean the world has stopped. The world will keep going. Just because you haven't made up your mind does not mean the world will stop. It will still go in. One of the things you have to embrace in life is change. That things will change. The bad news is that we don't like change. 
We like things to be as they are because we build our life around our comforts. Things that make us feel comfortable, that's why we build our lives. But things change and if you don't move along, you'll be left behind. In so many ways, we see that happening. As a pastor, I've seen it happen many times when things change. The way church was 20 years ago is not the way church is today. We have to change. The way people were 20 years ago is not the same way they are today. This church has changed. When we started, we were just a bunch of young people just trying to obey God. I remember when we used to have church, we used to have church uh, from about 8 o'clock in the morning till about 3 in the afternoon, one service. And I felt we were, that was the best, because we're all young people. We were married, not married, and if we were married, just newly married, no children, no homework to go and supervise, nothing else to do, just church. And we felt the longer we stayed in the presence of God, the more, if, be, the better it was, and the more anointed we were. Then we started marrying, and everybody started marrying. And those who were married couldn't come for choir practice. And people had to take care of their husbands. And husbands had to take care of their children. And you have to go home early to take care of your children's uh, improvement. And people started getting more responsibilities in the office. And they had to stay and do overtime. So we have to realize change is happening. If we continue to do church that long, we will have our church. But there will be nobody to church. And so we had to change. And we had to adapt. And that's why our services are straight to the point because life is changing. And who knows, now our service is about two hours. I'm sure pretty soon it will be one hour, 45 minutes, and we may even go to one hour, 30 minutes. Change is constant. And whether you like it or not, change will change. All right. Number 25, 25th lesson. Elderly people deserve my courtesy and respect. They deserve my respect. Why? Because they are the picture of my future. When you see an older person, if he's slow, don't try to push him. He's just telling you how you look like 30 years from now. When you see an older person who easily forgets, don't laugh at him because you will also forget 40 years from today. When you see an older person who is very unhappy because of the way he treated his children and the way he treated his wife everybody has abandoned him he's 80 years old he's living alone nobody visits him don't be quick to criticize because if you make the same choices you'll also be 80 and alone the people who are ahead of you show you what your future can be respect them even when they have made terrible mistakes respect them because they are your best teachers. They teach you how life can turn for good or for evil. They deserve your respect. And I think that as you grow older, the more you respect older people. Just for the fact that they survived is, is, is just respectable. Because this world is, is a crazy world. And things happen. And just for somebody to live to be 90 years... Even if he didn't achieve anything, he breathed for 90 years. Respect him for breathing. Elderly people deserve my courtesy and respect because they are the picture of my future. When you see anybody who is ahead of you, remember he's shown you what your future can look like. If you don't want what they have become, then you have to make some choices in your life. Number 26, 26 lesson. People are people. I can, change, I can help them, but I can't change them. That's one sober lesson I've learned in life. That people are people. They are not angels. They are just people. I can change people. I can help people. I can teach them. I can advise. I can counsel. I can support. But I can change. And I've come to realize... There are people you can help with everything in you, but they will never change. They will never change. You can advise them with the best advice, they will never take it. 
You can give them money, they will misuse it. You can point their mistakes to them, they will never learn. That's one thing about people. They are people. And when you find there are people who don't change, help them if you can and leave them. They have to sort their own lives out. You, you can't solve people's problems for them and you cannot live people's lives for them. They make their own choices and they live with the consequences. People are people. You can help them, you can't change them. The interesting thing is, even God looks at people and they are people. I mean, if God could change everybody, don't you think he would just say one word, be changed, and everybody will be changed? No. He, teach, he gives us his word. He lets his Holy Spirit lead us. He will bring people to speak to us. But he can't change us until we make a choice to repent. When Adam and Eve were going to sin, where was God? You think he was far away? He was there. He created them. He planted the Garden of Eden. He told them, don't eat of that fruit. They went to the fruit. He was there. They picked the fruit. He was there. They took it close to their mouth. He didn't hit their hand. They ate it. Because people are people. You can help them. You can't change them. If somebody wants to be bad, they will be bad. If somebody wants to be stubborn, they'll be stubborn. Do your best to help people. Leave the change up to them. It's people's responsibility to make personal changes, not your responsibility to change them. And that's one of the things everybody should learn. Husbands, your wife is your wife. You can help her, you can change her. Wives, your husband is your husband. You can help him, you can change him. The bad habit he learned, he will live with it. Oh yeah, you better adjust. <laughs> they don't people don't change much. They change small, 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 small. Small, small, small changes. The same complaints you make 20 years ago, you'll find you are making it 20 years later. Because people are people. You can help them. You can change them. Say with me, people are people. I can help them. I can change them. All right? So don't get frustrated. Just help them. Leave the change up to them. All right. Number 27. You ready for this? Those who like to criticize others to me will also criticize me to others. So when you are listening to the criticism and say, eh, oh, they did it, yay, they are bad, oh, remember, tomorrow it will be your record playing somewhere. Critics are critics. They just need a subject. And you are the subject. They won't criticize you to your face, but they will criticize you. Anybody who has a smooth tongue and talks a lot will talk a lot even when there is nothing to say. And when they have no subject, they will pull you on the table and talk about you. That's why you don't encourage critics around you. It's all right for once in a while people to share opinion about you, about something, or you're doing something, and somebody comes and says, listen, I have this information about that person. I think you should look at it carefully. That's fine once in a while. But if it's somebody's habit where they're constantly bad-mouthing somebody to you, Guaranteed, they are doing the same about you to somebody else. You cannot be safe around a critic. You cannot be safe around a gossip. Anybody who spreads gossip to you is spreading gossip about you to somebody else. If you don't want it to, start to continue, stop the gossip. Tell him, thank you, I've heard enough. Thank you. Last, the last week one, I haven't fully digested it, so keep this week's one. And uh, maybe next, next year you can give me another one. But if the person is always gossiping about somebody, guaranteed he's gossiping about you too. You are not immune, my friend. You're not the best person. People will talk about you. Number 28. 28 lesson. Blame does not solve problems. It's one lesson I've learned. 
Now, when there is a problem, it's easy to blame somebody. Who did it? Who did that? Who did that? Who did that? Why didn't he do it? And yes, it's good to talk about all the things that people did wrong, but that doesn't solve the problem. The earlier you get out of blame to provide solutions, the better for you. Somebody is always responsible for what is wrong. You can blame people. You can blame the government. You can blame the president. You can blame the pastor. You can blame your father. You can blame your school teacher. You can blame your community. But it doesn't solve the problem. Blame doesn't solve problems. Don't go through your life blaming people. You have to take responsibility and solve your problems. And the earlier you stop blaming, the better. When things go wrong, yes, we'll blame somebody, we'll be angry, and we'll talk about what people did for, uh, which was wrong, but say it just for a short while. But quickly move from blame to solution. Because if you get frozen with blame, and you just keep talking about the problem and who created it, you will never find solution. I think that's something politicians should start learning. The blame doesn't solve problems. Blame doesn't solve problems. Number 29. This one is an interesting one. People are complex. When you think you know them, they do something crazy. Isn't that true? When you think you know somebody, you say, oh, I asked for this one. Oh, I know him. Then he does something. You start scratching your head. What happened? People are complex. They make crazy choices. Sensible people make crazy choices. They do silly things. And you wonder, what were they thinking? The question is, are you like that also? Do you do crazy things that you, you wonder to yourself, what was I thinking? What was going through my mind? Why did, why did I do that? Because you are complex. You don't know yourself the way you think you do. I don't know myself the way I think I do. And sometimes when certain situations have not come your way, you cannot predict how you will respond. If you've never walked where people have walked, it's not easy to understand them. And sometimes you can't even predict your own actions. There are things you say, I would never do, simply because you have never been put within certain conditions. And you realize you do crazy things yourself. People are complex. People will shock you. People will disappoint you. People will let you down. People you never thought will betray you will betray you. People you never thought would let you down will let you down. And sometimes people you never thought would be good will be good. And people you thought were your enemies will turn out to be your best friends. There are crazy things that happen in this life. It's complex. Things are not always permanent. Things are not always predictable. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.